Well, this is Baruch Fleischman here at the Tikkun Elevator Kolel, and it's my pleasure to learn this sweet, sweet Zohar and all the things that come out of it. And here we are in Parshas Chai Sara. And uh, it's on page Zion in the edition that's Matuk the Devash. You could see that I wrote on this, Ad Khan, uh, on, on the year Tafshin Ayin. So this is Tafshin Pei Beis. So this is 12 years ago. I saw this the last time. So we'll come over here. We'll see it again. And every time is a new time and a special time. So let's go over here. And if you remember, in the first Urim that we dealt with here, we were dealing with the life of Yonah Hanavi. And the idea was that Yonah, uh, he fled from a nevuah that was given to him. And as a result of that, he had a really bad go in the in the sea. He died in the sea, but his his soul was brought back to him because of the future possibilities of him. That's why I think. Now, along the way, he told us a secret uh, that we're supposed to follow. Because all of us are, should be concerned about getting our prayers answered. I mean, this is the reason why we do this. We want to get as close to the Ain't of Baruch Hu as possible to deal with eternity and get an idea of what we're doing in this world and try to do something about it through our prayers and our learning. So over there, it said this idea that the origin of Nevoa, now we don't mean that it was created there because it comes from the Ain't of Baruch Hu. But where we can understand its origin is in the in the sphere of Bina, particular particularly the Bina of Zeranpin, and then from the Bina Zeranpin, which is on the left side of Zeranpin, it flows downwards until it reaches the left leg of Zeranpin, which is his hode. And in different places, that they are saying, I mean, I don't know that much about it. This is that prophecy comes from Netzachan Hode, from the legs of Zeranpin, but. Yona was a person didn't didn't want that 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 uh, that prophecy. He didn't want to get involved with it. Instead, he ran away. So the the Zohar asks a question. So he was punished, and he brings that brings out some interesting ideas there. That when as soon as his foot hit the water, that the water calmed down. So he's being punished by water. So the Zohar asks a question. So well, why why would you wait if Yona is going to run away? Why not just smite him right where he's at, in Eretz Yisrael or in his own house? Why not give him some trouble over there, make him sick, do something else? So be think about it. So the Zohar asks, you know, it's just, it answers in a kind of a, a, a difficult way to just hear it offhand, but I've been thinking about it. It says that another word for Bina is me, Mem Yud. It's a gematria of 50. We have different kinds of things we could say about it. The word, another letter, the different arrangement of that word, me, is the word yam, which means see. So you have one, me is who, because beyond their anpen, it's really unknowable, not very well knowable. And at the same time, it's also yam. It comes out in malchus. And this is tell us what? That even though the origin, let's say we have the origin of dinim and different things are coming out of the concept of bina, which is me. But you need, in order for them to be manifest and the dinim to take place, it has to come to the concept of yam. And so the yam represents malchus, because it is malchus that receives the shefa, and it is malchus that actually dishes out the shefa according to the way it, way it is. So the origin of the prophecy is in me, but ultimately in the end, he has to make an arrangement with the yam, with the secret of, of malchus. Now let's go over to a different place here. As we said before, this is on page Zion in the Zohar. And then we're going to say, Va'atar Choser Rebbe, Rebbe Yos. Rebbe Yos had been talking. So he said, Rebbe Yos is the first apostle of Shehiskil Bo, Ba'amod Allah. So he's going to start talking about the very first apostle. And he said, Va'amar Be'yuhu Chai Sarah. And it will be that the, the life of Sarah. So he says like that. He stops there. That's the beginning of the apostle. And he says, Ma'ishna Hocha. What's the difference? Besara. Because it writes over here that her death, uh, it writes her death in the Torah. So I ask this question, that all these, what is written in about Sarah in the Torah, more than any other woman in the world. And that Zohar says that their death is really not written in the Torah. Yosem called a nashim. That is, why is she have, have? It's more important her her to be written in than Shabbat Olam Shal Ajloka Suva Bisasa Batera because the death of other ones, other great women, are not mentioned in the Torah. 
So it says, I'm a Rebbe Chia, the Rebbe Yosef. Rebbe Chia says the Rebbe Yosef. The love, really? He said, Ki lo kasuva misis shar nashim b'teri. You don't have any other women out there that their death is mentioned? Now, this is like a conversation that maybe Rabbi Yosef was thinking about it. And as it came out of his mouth, it wasn't 100, my thinking maybe it wasn't 100% consi- uh, c- complete what he wanted to say. Because it's a vachsiv, but Thomas Rachel, but Rachel died, but to give over the derech of and she was buried on the way to Ephrat. Vachsiv, but Thomas, Sean, Miriam. And there's another place where Miriam died there. Vachsiv, but Thomas, Devora. Then we have another one, Minekis, Rivka. And they say over there, she was the nursemaid of Rivka. Vachsiv, but Thomas, Bashua, Ashes, Yehuda. And then another one, here's the Bashua. She died, she was the wife of Yehuda. Going on. I'm a Rebbe Yosef. Rebbe Yosef has to come back and he has to say, wait a minute, wait, I didn't mean it. You, you hopped in there too quickly. That's true. But with all of these other women who died, it wasn't really the same kind of description as you had with Sarah. So it says she was 100 years old. And 20 years old. So it's an unusual way to write something. Now, I know there are Midrashim that talk about when she was 100 years old, she was one way. To, but let's see the, the, uh, what the Zohar wants to say about this. Because all of the rest of the women who died, they didn't write how long they lived. But Shana say him are say for the years come of the Sara, like they were Sara, one hundred twenty seven, twenty excuse me, plus seven. Bhuhu Lok Sid Baparsha Sahad uh Baharsha Sah Khada Bidhidu Kamal Sara. So there isn't no other case where it's written out like this. Bakulum no nik niktavu parsha achas. Also here's another thing. She has an entire parsha which is written after her name, her name Chai Sara. No one else had a parsha. Ella raza ilu, ihu. But actually, there's a secret here. Ella masha kasuva b'tera, where it says shnei chai sara yesh b'zeh so. There's a secret. Begin haku darga the kol yomer of shnei the kol yomer the shnei the var nash beitanyan. So the matik let's get a good translation. The matik said b'shvil otzach madrega because there is a certain level. She say he says that she hamalchus. It's the level called malchus, which is at the bottom of the parts of of, of the parts of him of of etzilus. She call hayomim v'hashanah because all of the days, all of the years shall chay adam of a man's life. Ba toluyim. They all depend on his malchus. Um b'mena nimshach and chay sara kuf kaf zayin shanim. So from this place in malchus. We see that the flow came out in 127 years. Now, this still is not 100% easy. I mean, he can break it down and he's going to. That she is built. And again, when we use the one word tikna, we mean that she is built such a way as to filter light downwards. And as a result of this, she perfects her neshama. Entering into all of her ten spheros. The Haino Meyashanim, so that is to say, like this, if it's a hundred years, and that's the way it starts. Kenega the Kasser, this refers to Kasser. Shuhu Besod Meos, which is, in this way of counting, the secret of hundreds. The Chen Hu Kalum Mea Brahinu, so therefore she is incorporated within her a hundred different aspects. Asara Shan Esrim Shana in twenty years. Kenega Chub, this corresponds to Chochma and Bina. Shabbat, Shehem Besot Asaros, which would be ten for each. Lechem Kol Kol Achas Kolula Me'eser Bechinos. So therefore, you had a hundred Bechinos, and inside of them there were twenty Bechinos. There were Kolula. There were two others. That's Chachma and Bina. They had ten ten Bechinos each. B'Sheva Shanim, and then there were seven years. What do the years have to do with? They have to do with their Anpin. Kenega the Zat, that's the Zion Tachtonos, the seven lower spheres of their Anpin, Shehem Besod Yechidos. Shehem Besod Yechidos. Lechem Kol Achas Kolulu Bechina Achas. So therefore, every one of them is incorporated in one Bechina, 
Basara Tikna Vihishlima Nishmasa Bakulam and this is the saying that all of the Shefa Bracha and it was possible to come into Malchus was perfected in Sara Imenu. Now let me see how we're doing time wise. We could do a little bit more. So this is a different, slightly different. But here we see that we're talking about, generally speaking, what's going on with Malchus, because we started with Yonah. What does Yonah have to do with the Chaisara? It has to do with the relationship between Malchus and the person, this person was a prophet. I was going to go on and see a little bit more. So now we're on page Ches, and here it is, page Ches. There it is. Now he's going to look at this Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Pirusha Pasuk Amuba Makoman. So we see of a Pasuk that we're going to get to. The Pasuk is from Kohelis. And it says, Vyisron Eretz. There is an advantage that the land has. Mashanira Shayesh Yisron. So what we see here, that there is an advantage. Hamoiser Be'eret Be'eretz, which is overflows in the land. So what is it? Pirish. So he says like this. Shiyesh Rishayim a Goizling, there are thieves, open robbers, mostly probably politicians. So there's robbers of a of a humasim and people who commit violence. But we remember remember uh, remember Yona. He says there are people who do really bad things, mafia people, worse per, worse people. does not remove them from the land. Bekol he, this is has to do with bekol. What's kol? What bekol mean? Bekol eluch advarim yesh to elis. All of these things that we're talking about, the existence of the rishayim of the world, so on and so forth, there is a purpose to it. Now he says what? Ratzon to lomish al kodesh baruch hu tsova. A kodesh baruch hu is not bound by by time like we are. We have one hundred twenty years at the end. But kodesh baruch hu, he's able to look. Umabed ad sof kaladoros and see all the way to the end of the generations. Veroa shazecha rosha yaamed ben sadik, and he sees that this rosha somehow down the line will bring forth a son who will be a sadik lechein he who mekayim also. So therefore, he keeps the person alive. Melech the sad in the evan. Then he comes another phrase, part of that same kohelis. He says, "Vamishuhu ma'aved sedehu ve'ina goizel v'chomes." Let's talk about a person who doesn't ruin. Uh, well, ma'aved means work the uh, work the uh, the land. Ve'ina goizel v'chomes. So this is a person who works the land. He doesn't steal anybody. He doesn't do any any violence. Then the hena megia megia pekapo, and all of his hinoa is what he does with his own hands. Hu chai chai shalva. Kamelech, that this person lives a life, a really living life of peace. Now that's the whole general idea of that, and let's see the Zohar. So it's a Pasuk V'Amar. So the Zohar begins, and it says, so once again we're talking about Rebbe Yossi. Yossi the Farish Masha Kasev, or let's, let's look at our Pasuk again. V'Yisron Eretz Bekol. So the Eretz is greater in everything. Bekol, he Melech L'Sada Ne'evet. And then there's another phrase, which says that the king... On the field, he will work the field. That's the way I said it. Now, the my, the art scroll wrote, wrote the word embedded instead of ne'eved. It works too, as we're going to see the shot. So, Pirish, let's understand that Matuk wants to, to explain. He said, the Yisron Eretz. Masha Yesh Yisron Vatosefer Shal Shef of Malchus and Nikra Eretz. So, we, we see there's something special about Malchus and there's something more about Malchus. Than anywhere else, of a klal zecha begam mashi ye shefa bracha be eretz atachtaina. So we understand that if there's shefa and bracha coming into malchus, incorporated in that is what should and God willing would be coming to us. He says bekol he vada. Now we had this word that sticks out here. It says the vamer with yisron eretz bekol. So we translate it over any other shafa, any uh, any other element. That's the way we try to understand it. It's embedded. So what what it means? But now he wants to go through the concept of kol, bekol kivada. So she's greater than everybody else. So what does this mean? It doesn't mean greater. Vadai habracha he tekila So he wants to say he's really giving us a sight map of an idea of how bracha goes. 
that bracha actually for pull, pulls into the Yisod of Zeranpen. A nikra kol, it's, he has another word for the Yisod of Zeranpen. It's called everything. Umamana nimshach alacha, and from that, everything. Everything goes into sir, the Yisod, and then in mating comes into the nukva. The Hamataba Nafgib the Taman because from there Nafgim Ruchim Vinishbasin Vato Alta La Alma Matuk the Fish and Basham because this place that's the the that is the Yasod, which is called Bracha. Shimasham Yotza Saruchos, the different Ruchos Vinishamos, these are two aspects of light. The Ruchos surround the Nishamos. Vato Elis the Oilam and it brings ultimate purpose and what are we doing here? in this world, all comes from here. Masha calls of Melech the Sud and Eved Vishal, so what it writes here, a Melech in the field is working, he's working the field, he says he's embedded in the field. Vishal man Melech, so now let's go over this Pusuk. He says, what is Melech? Melech, on our normal understanding, Amin Ne'emes Melech, Milas Melech, what does the word Melech refer to? Most of the time, it refers to Zer Anpen. He is the Mashpia, the giver to Malchus. The Sad in the Evad, he works the field, or he's embedded in the field. The Malchus and Nikra Sada, because Malchus is called Sada. And Penimi to Malchus, the way he's saying, is Zer Anpen. Who Ne'evad, and what part of Zer Anpen is Yisod? Pirus, so I'm explained like this. Mesha'evid atzmo, so he ties himself together. Mesha'evid, he mean he makes himself, or he forms himself, or he embeds himself, like he'd like the art scroll said, atzmo lahash biyabo, in order to be inside of her and to bring her sustenance. Kal mini hushbos derech yisod, and all the different kinds of hushbos, they come through this yisod. Kad ihu istanghi the koyaus, and then when she's properly put into the proper position. Kashahima Sukenis Karoi. How does she get into the proper position? How is she built properly? Remember once again, Ms. Tikun represents limitation of light, making the words, making the ideas digestible by limiting the power of the light of the Ain Sof, which is really a power of nothing. In order to make it uh the energy level from the Ain Sof, it has to be limited. And that's the concept of uh, Mesukenis. And how do are we misaken this light? they mitzvahs. We do this by doing good deeds. Masim tovim and good and, and good deeds and masim mitzvahs and masim tovim. Shalatach tovim. That refers to us when we put on tefill in the morning or we light the candles Friday night. This whole thing is mayim nukvin, which is setting up the whole process of re, uh, uh, of making the pathways from the Ein Sof down to us work. Before Yosef so explains more, when Melech da Melech ilodi his chaver the sade, kad ihi neevit. So Melech zeh, this Melech that we're talking about is a Melech elyon. It's the higher Melech, which king, which is there unpin in the in the parts of of its silus. Shemis chaver of the Malchus kashihim uved uvedes and besukenes, and so it joins together with Malchus as she is working and being built up as a result, once again, of the Tefilos and the Maizim Tavim. So he says, uh, let me see if I lost something. Mesukenes. Man Sada. Once again, what's the field? Al mi romezes mi the Sada. So what we learn out of this, everything grows from the field. Sada Hashem Berchu Hashem. This is the Sada that was blessed by Hashem. Now notice that the word Berchu is also the word Baruch, which Baruch refers to Yisod. As she is the Malchus, that from Zer Anpin and his Yesod, she receives the Brachos. From, from her, from the Zion Tachtonus of Zer Anpin, and that's the Zion Tachtonus, and he's called the Malchus, is called by the last letter He. Because we have the sweet perfume of the field. That's the Malchus when she her in the beautiful perfume that she has on. Asher Berchu Hashem Dachayna Zer Anpen that was blessed by Zer Anpen. The Kad Ihi Neeved Istakin B'Kol Ma De Itzprich Le De Kol Yos. 
So when the congregation is learning and when the congregation is praying, when she's put into the proper position, she has lifted up all of these prayers and all of this this Torah. Ritzon Lomer, mitzvahs and maizim toivim. Using those things, these are our tools. Sha'al yada hi ma'ala man, the is yadam, that through them she is able to bring up mayim nukvin. This is the process. The pump has to go upwards first. Kaden melechi lo is chavrime. And that's when you see that the upper king joins with her, az melech elyon, which is their anpin, mischaver imo, he mates with her, they become one together. The mashbila sheva brachos and cause the shefa, these brachos, to pour into her. And this is Baruch Fleischman here at the Tikkun Elevator Kolel. This is actually share number three. I'm going to be able to do a fourth one because I missed yesterday. Kaltuf.